We're going to talk to the Jimi Hendrix Experience. We're going to, I'm sure everybody knows him by now, but we'll run it down. Mitch Mitchell, Jimi Hendrix, Noel Redding. Uh, you have not been to Vancouver before, but you have been to Canada. Did you play uh, Montreal or the coast at one time? Yeah, we did. We played Montreal on this uh, tour that we're on now. It's a really nice tour. Did you go to the play Toronto? Yeah, right. Was it just one night? Yeah, not in Ontario. So Ontario. We did three you notice that that was uh, anything different from the audience that you've been used to? Not necessarily. There was more uh, raving, like, you know. It was more on their toes than some audiences, you know. But that's because we probably haven't played there before. Yeah. What about the music, though? Did they know the music? Did they yeah, seem to appreciate it? it? Seems English to me, yeah. Really? Yeah, it's rather like going out, maybe if you go to the depths of England up north. Like, you know, they haven't seen you before. They really quite a while. At least the music. They were, uh, as far as Canada is concerned, they were almost the last to pick up on your music. It seems they were almost hesitant to do it. Probably because they didn't hear it. They was probably the last ones to hear it, probably. Canada's always the last. They don't get the records up here as quick as some people's Sorry. certain types of records. Do they still have Dawson Annex School here? Do they still have what? Dawson School. Dawson Annex. Yes. Yes. Right, I used to go there. We <laughs> had <laughs> the good old days. You have relatives up here, do you? Yeah, they're outside. Uh, is there still a family thing going on? What do you mean by that? Uh, well, I'm, no, all right, okay. Well, what do you mean? Do you mean, do I still have a family? No, do you, do you, I know you don't get back here often or it comes back at all, but do you recognize most of these people from there? From well, like, I know what my family looks like quite naturally. I just don't get a chance to see them until maybe we play here. You know, this is only the second time in about eight years. I've seen, you know, my dad and my mother and sisters and so forth. And like my grandmother and uh, her boyfriend and uh, my cousins are out there now, you know. And I, like to see, I haven't seen them yet. They're, I'll, and I'll see them later on tonight. Does anything change when the family's in front of you? For any one of you? We've all done. We did um, a tour once in England and we did a show in London and we had the same thing. Uh, my parents came up, Mitch's parents came up, you know. And Hello, Mum! <laughs> I know that you don't get back to England that much, as much as you like to possibly, but uh, the current thing that's happening over there where they <coughs> started a rock revival and then they did something else, do you find that it's starting to sway like your home base, the, the music that's coming out of there, are they sort of uncertain as what they're doing over there? Because they, there's something definitely happening with underground music. There's, a there's always something uh, happening. Yeah, the, yeah, there's always something happening, but I mean, underground music, you know, music's music, we don't know, it's the same all over the world. Because like after the Beatles like took a back seat, you know, after they sat down for a while, and then it got really mixed up. Like you know, there's different things coming up. They got the traffic, and the family, all these groups that you don't hear about all the time. You know, they're happening as far as music-wise, but as far as you know, they're, they're really stuck up on uh, like balance and pop, you know, pop. Yeah. they're all screwed up right now. So. Do you think it'll straighten up? Yeah, so as we get over there. It's <laughs> what are you? What are you gonna do? You have another LP coming? Yeah, a double LP. It's finished, completely finished. It'll be out in about 10 days. So then, yeah. <laughs> it's called Electric Lady now. Electric Lady? Yeah. Right. No, did you do anything? Oh, sorry. Did you do anything uh, on the LP that. Uh, did you get a chance to sing it? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, he has a song called Little Miss Strange. This is the beginning track on the, uh, one of the sides. It's a four sided LP. He has a beginning track on one of the sides. He let Mitch just think of the, uh, this town, huh? Was that? <laughs> Excuse me. Is that a cold hay fever? No, it was a change of climate. Yeah. Know? Coming from, uh, what was it, Salt Lake all the way to Denver, and then Los Angeles. San Diego. You know, this place, you know. But like, uh, him and uh, Mitch are singing this English rock type thing. It's called The Mistrain. It's a good song. This revival in the blues, and this, this mention well, I made. This revival. I'm oh, playing, right, you know, right. all I know, you know. I'm just playing the way I feel. If it sounds like blues, well then, you know, call it anything you want. But it's no revival, kid. Because uh, why go back into the past, you know? Why go back there and drag out blues way shoes? Just because it's supposed to be hip to revive rock, you know? Which is a drag in the first place, because those people have done their thing and, you know, they're not offering you anything this very instant, are they? There's so many musicians right now playing 20 times better than any Chuck Berry or any uh, Fast Stone or any, but I'm not putting these people down, I'm just saying that the music's better now, and people just don't even know it. it's right in their faces, they don't even know how to accept it because it's, you know, it's just so much better. And they have to have gimmicks and imagery to go by. 
if, if they don't have these things in the way, then they don't know nothing about music. That's the way some people think, which is a big fat drag sometimes. Do you ever surprise yourself with some of the things you come up with when you play? Yeah. Do you find yourself in a completely different On classic stage? set? Yeah. Do you find yourself playing things that you've heard from for a long time? Or does it come I don't even know, because I don't want to even think about what I'm actually playing or what I can play. I just want to listen to what Noel and Jimmy are playing. And just dig that. Like, I hope they listen to me. Because actually, we never know what we're doing on stage, maybe until you might record it one night and <coughs> listen to it. And then you might actually get some enjoyment from it. Maybe. <laughs> you might just think it's a big fat drag. Like, we've been together for about two solid years. Yeah. And we've been playing Purple Haze, One Rise Mary, uh, there was a Hey Joe, Foxy Lady. We've been playing all these songs, which I really think are groovy songs. But we've been playing all these songs for two years. So quite naturally, we start improvising here and there. And there's other things we want to turn on to the people, you know. As long as they're aware that, that we're trying to be a music group, regardless of what we might look like, or, you know. Where it's at, Hendricks interview, see you roll on take five. This one particularly, because we have strong English ties with radio, you know, like Radio Caroline, etc. Those jocks were sending us um, things over. I got my first copy of the first LP from uh, Pete Townsend. Yeah. And he laid it on. We listened to it at his place. We were watching his home movies. And, uh, and we had this on the background, and it really got into my head the first time I heard it. The second time I went over, he uh, gave me the second one. So he's been sort of my contact for you people. Do you find that your music gets close to other English groups at times? I don't think about it. We just record what we want to play, you know. There's a cut called Red House on the first LP, which was not here, right? Yeah. Which was not here on our LP. We didn't get it, we didn't get to hear it, until somebody laid an English copy on us. And uh, it's become a minor hit here, simply because people... We'll do it tonight. Anyway. Will you really? Yeah. For real? Oh, that would make, like, a lot of people happy. years of traveling all over the states, all over the place, yeah. I was asking you, Mitch, if you had to change your drum set, you hadn't. Because the last time I saw you was in Seattle, yeah. and I, all I was watching was the sticks and the cymbals, and I couldn't see you, and I knew there was a lot of drums. <laughs> well, so the same so I'm hide away, way. that's all, man. <laughs> Are you still there the whole time? Well, actually, if the truth is known, I've got a little robot, I sneak up for a crafty beer behind the amplifiers. <laughs> no one can see me anyway, so, you know, that's what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> um, your speaker systems uh, that you have behind you are very, very important. How'd you come about picking those and, and getting them on? Well, like, for instance, about, you know, a while back, before I went over to England, I had this really good sound, but I didn't want to lose it, like, in case we play in big places. And, like, over in England, the best things, well, like, Marshall was just starting off to be really good. Mm -hmm. So quite naturally, I wanted the loudest and the biggest sound possible. As long as you have the loudest and the biggest, then you can like bring it down to whatever level you want, or either keep it the you know all time. So this is Marshall. Do you find that you the bigger the sun? Yeah. On your side. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> I'm not gonna get into that. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Uh, do you find that the bigger the building, the harder it is to play because you're playing an awful lot of money? No. Because like, it's in your own head. you know, why try to break down according to the building, you know? Some, some of these people don't care what kind of building they put you in anyway, the promoters, you know? As long as they uh, get the money out of you and get the money out of the people, so therefore you don't even worry about the building. You just go on and play your gig. And uh, quite naturally you try to set the best sound possible, but you don't have to sit up here and spend an hour on working on this because the building might be rectangular. Some mess like that. When I, I know that people talk about, as a matter of fact, it's been overworked, the word jamming, but do you find you go back to blues? If you have time to sit down and play, go on yourself. Well, like, I wouldn't call it blues. I'd probably do a few Muddy Waters tunes and yeah. do this, you know. Because I dig, you know, I dig Muddy Waters and work. And he digs, you know, like, like rock cats and he digs a lot of jazz people. But like when we jam, all these things come about, you know. They all come up to another music that you haven't even named yet. You know. 
Which is the only thing you've got by now is called the jam. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. So it might be like musicians of different qualities and categories, or so called categories, you know. I mean, like, would you expect me and Louis Armstrong playing with maybe John Coltrane? Yeah. You know, who knows one day? It's not like the cats that we've been playing with lately have been on different music scenes entirely. Yeah. So, like, you know, some little journalist just kind of go and put a word on it. Oh, you're yeah, trying to stuff. psych it out, and yeah, it's not about free form right. anyway. In other words, if you're going to get your free form when you jam, if you're going to get that psyched out and analyzed and dissect it, then what else, you know, what are you going to do? Call into a hole or something, you know? Where were you when all this happened in Chicago about three weeks ago? Were you at in the States at the time? I think we was, yeah, you know, playing some of it. Did you get on that? Like oh, I wish we could have been on that. I have a camera, I could have filmed it, you know. <laughs> Lots of laughing, laughing. Chicago. People just keep saying Chicago, I don't know. What was the question you asked? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's all right. What would you, you say? Like the dying songs. Do you like the young people? Are the young oh, people definitely, man. Like anybody who dig our sound. Yeah. Anybody who could, you know, who, who could. They don't even have to like it as long as they, uh, yeah, as long as they uh, give their own self a chance when getting into it. If they pay four or five dollars to get inside the concert. Thank you. Thank you too. <laughs> ties with radio, you know, like Radio Caroline, etc. Those jocks were sending us um, things over. I got my first copy of the first LP from uh, Pete Townsend, yeah. and he laid it out. We listened to it at his place. We were watching his home movies, and uh, and we had this on the background, and it really got into my head the first time I heard it. The second time I went over, he uh, gave me the second one, so he's been sort of my contact for you people. Do you find that your music gets close to other English groups at times? I don't think about it. We just record what we want to play, you know. Yeah, we're never there anyway. I don't know what's going on. There's a cut called Red House on the first LP, which was not here, right? Yeah. Which was not here on our LP. We didn't get it, we didn't get to hear it until somebody laid an English copy on us. And uh, it's become a minor hit here, simply because people... We'll do it tonight. Anyway. Will you really? Yeah. For real? Oh, that would make, like, a lot of people happy. Yeah. Felix, and he was talking about at one time playing with Joey D on the Starlighters, and uh, you happened to cross paths. I don't know if you remember the meeting, but you did play a couple of games apparently together. Yeah, I used to play with Joey D. For, uh, and I used to play with, uh, you know, a lot of other groups in that right. same scene. You know. But then you got into your own thing. Well, it was about time, wasn't it? You know, yeah. After six years of traveling all over the States, a little bit. all over the place, yeah. I was asking you, Mitch, if you had changed your drum set, and you hadn't. Because the last time I saw you was in Seattle, yeah. and I, all I was watching was the sticks and the cymbals, and I couldn't see you, and I knew there was a lot of drums. <laughs> well, so the same as I hide away, that's all, man. <laughs> Are you still there the whole time? Well, actually, if the truth is known, I've got a little robot, I sneak up for a crafty beer behind the amplifiers. <laughs> no one can see me anyway, so, you know, that's what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> um, your speaker systems uh, that you have behind you are very, very important. How'd you come about picking those and, and getting them up? Well, like, for instance, about, you know, a while back, before I went over to England, I had this really good sound, but I didn't want to lose it, like, in case we play in big places. And, like, over in England, the best things, well, like, Marshall was just starting off to be really good. So quite naturally, I wanted the loudest and the biggest sound possible. As long as they have the loudest and the biggest, then you can, like, bring it down to whatever level you want, or either keep it the, you know, all the time. So this is Marshall. Do you find that you the bigger the sound? Do you, <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Uh, do you find that the bigger the building, the harder it is to play? Because you're playing an awful lot of money. No. no. Because, no, like, in your own head. you know, why I try to break down according to the building? You know, some, some of these people don't care what kind of building they put you in anyway, the promoters, you know. Yeah. As long as they uh, get the money out of you and get the money out of the people. So, therefore, you don't even worry about the building. You just go on and play your gig. 
And uh, quite naturally, try to set up the business as possible, but you don't have to sit up there and spend an hour on working on this because the building might be rectangular or something else like that. When I, I know that people talk about, as a matter of fact, it's been overworked, the word jamming, but do you find you go back to blues? If you have time to sit down and play, go and see Well, like, I wouldn't call it blues. I'd probably do a few Muddy Waters tunes and yeah. do this, you know. Because I dig. You know, I dig Muddy Waters and work and he digs, you know, like rock cats and he digs a lot of jazz people. But like when we jam, all these things come about, you know. They all come up to another music that you haven't even named yet. Which you, the only thing you can go by now is called that jam. Yeah, guess, uh, yeah. So it might be like musicians of different qualities and categories, or so-called categories. You know, I mean, like, would you expect the Louis Armstrong playing with maybe John Coltrane? Yeah. You know, who knows? One day, it's not the cats that we've been playing with lately. We've been on different music scenes entirely. Yeah. So like, you know, some little journalist is going to go and put a word on it. Or either try to psych it out, and yeah, it's not a bit free right. form anyway. In other words, if you're going to get your free form when you jam, if you're going to get that psyched out and analyzed and dissected, then what else, you know, what are you going to do? Fall into a hole or something, you know? Where were you when all this happened in Chicago about three weeks ago? Were you uh, in the States at the time? I think we was, yeah, playing some. Did we get out on that? Was it like? Well, I wish we could have been out there. I have a camera, I could have filmed it, you know. Chicago. Oh, that's my People yeah, just keep saying Chicago. Chicago. Oh, I don't know. What was the question you asked? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's alright. What did you say? No, like the young people. Do you like the young people? Are there young oh, people definitely, man. Like anybody could dig our sound. Yeah. Anybody who could, you know, who, who could. They don't even have to like it as long as they. Uh, yeah, as long as they uh, give their own self a chance when getting into it. If they pay four or five dollars to get inside the concert. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you too.